Hi-Fi Rush is a game I only discovered around a month or so ago during the Game Awards. I then proceeded to get distracted with a bunch of other fun games and forgot about it. Through some divine stroke of intrigue, I found myself interested in the game again around late December, and by early January, I had finally picked it up. And oh my god! Hi-Fi Rush is easily one of the most exciting games I have played in a long, long time. I don't even know where to start, except actually I do, I'm writing a script. The basic premise is as follows. Chai is a 25-year-old college dropout who has big dreams of becoming a rock star. He also happens to have a broken arm, and after arriving on Vandalay campus in order to get a new prosthetic limb, his iPod falls directly into his chest during his operation and renders him oral divergent. That is, Chai now perceives the entire world as if it was operating in rhythm with whatever track is playing in his head, and together with a diverse cast of characters, he intends to put an end to Vandalay Technologies' evil designs. Okay, let me start off by saying this whole game is so incredibly Disney Channel. The animation for the pre-rendered cutscenes looks straight out of the spectacular Spider-Man, and the in-game art design is an incredibly striking venture into pop art. And even the characters themselves look like they belong in Disney XD. <laughs> the bar for visual and aesthetic quality that this game upholds is extremely high. It is a gorgeous cell shaded take on the 3D animation into the Spider-Verse seems to have popularized since its release. Do not quote me on that. I am uneducated on cinematic trends. I found myself actually preferring the in-game cinematics to the pre-rendered cutscenes, which genuinely never happens in any video game ever. Similarly to the visuals, the writing is absolutely immaculate with just a hint of cheese. Never have I laughed aloud like a maniac more than when watching these cutscenes. All the actors put on such an incredible and comedic performance and deserve the highest of praise. Despite the occasional need to suspend your disbelief when a character lets out a particularly campy or cringeworthy line, 99% of the dialogue made me so happy in so many different ways. It is definitely the wittiest game I have played in recent time, and somehow I even found myself Myself getting emotional every once in a while during the particularly heartfelt scenes. Okay, so Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm action game. I had never even tried any games within the rhythm genre before Hi-Fi, so I was very intrigued as to how I'd enjoy my experience, as I'm usually quite drawn towards games that put a large emphasis on reaction time. However, Hi-Fi is not a traditional rhythm game. All of your attacks will always land on beat, so regardless of your input, riffs are added to the background track whenever you make contact with an enemy. Where input becomes important is when you're looking to do more damage or get a higher score. Landing your attacks in time with the music's beat will net you bonuses during combat and allow you to chain together combos. At the end of each combo, a circular button prompt will appear. Make the input at the right time and you'll finish the combo. It can be a little clunky at first, but but once you finally get the hang of it... It is the most fun you will have playing a video game. Every fight is made so exhilarating when you try to play on beat. The fact that successful combos reward the player by playing a nasty riff that works perfectly in tandem with the existent track is genius, and it's such a beautiful way to encourage skilled play. I have 70 hours in Sekiro, and this game's combat can easily rival that game's intensity and stress level. Granted, you're taking it seriously yourself. There's a post-game mode called BPM Rush, where the beats per minute rise with every successful level cleared, and my heart has never been higher when playing a game. Oh my gosh, I felt like I was physically harming myself while playing. Please don't tell my doctor, he's a really cool guy and I don't want him to be disappointed in me. You can also call in multiple support characters to help you in battle, and each of them can be combined with your existing combos to make for some pretty awesome finishing moves. And certain enemies have defenses or attacks that can only be neutralized by the supporting cast. It can be really fun to call them all in at once and watch them wreak havoc on a bunch of enemies while you use the time to regroup. Similarly to everything else, your dodges are synced up with the beat as well. If you dodge in time with the beat correctly, you're rewarded with an extra dodge, which is just so fun. You can also use that dodge as a traversal tool when platforming. The platforming itself is solid. Chai moves a little too tight for my liking. I tend to prefer momentum-based movement in games, where you can feel your character slip sliding around. It is the only reason I don't dislike Sonic Frontiers. But I eventually became accustomed to the game's limited movement, and learned to appreciate huh. <laughs> and learn to appreciate it, as it plays into the game's obsession with precision and pattern recognition quite well. Where the traversal mechanics really shine, though, 
are the set pieces and quick time events. One of my favorite kinds of sequence is when Chai uses his grappling hook to latch onto a big ol' slippy ceiling slippy slide and you're expected to dodge the debris around you on beat. And this game absolutely nails every single quick time event. Uh, many games make the mistake of dumbing down these sequences and making them feel like an excuse to disregard interesting gameplay, but Hi-Fi Rush makes quick time events genuinely fun by adding extra levels of complexity to your inputs and really challenging you when it comes to your precision and timing. I honestly have way too much to say about Hi-Fi Rush, and I'd go on for way too long if you'd let me. I may end up making a full-length essay about it one day, but for now, here are some miscellaneous elements I adore. All of the supporting cast is excellent. Each character brings a unique flavor both in dialogue and design. Corsica is my personal favorite because she's cool. I will say that the amount of Corsica thirst within the community is somewhat disturbing, but that's beside the point. Once again, the comedic timing is impeccable and connected with me on such a personal level. Silly things like Chai refusing to untie his shoes and jamming his foot into his sneaker brought me much joy. Oh, and Corsica's head trauma is worth a good gaff, wait, goof, good goof gaff -er it's funny. 808 is perfect and I love her and I especially adore the body language she adapts to whenever another character is speaking through her. Additionally, the post-game content seems relatively plentiful and it's genuinely fulfilling to see a single player game that was fully complete on release yet still received free updates after launch as DLC just because the developers wanted to. Also, the main villain is Sonic. Just drop it, Kale. We're coming after you. Actually, it's funny because see, I'm coming after you. That's not a joke, it's the same voice actor. I I love Roger Craig Smith, he was a good guy. I have so, 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 so much more to say about the game, but I truly do not have time to express all of it during a backlog video. So go play it yourself. It's such an amazing experience. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, all footage was sourced from either me or Logplay Archive. That is what it normally is. Um. Have a good day, a good birthday. New videos are still coming out soon. Um, read Job in the Bible, it's a really good book. And bye bye. I'm sorry, Austin Hargrave, that I was ripping you off. Bye.